Uh, good afternoon to the afternoon session. Uh, let me initially assign some problems for solution. Uh, then I am around for interaction on these problems and on the morning lecture. And after the tea break, Professor Gaitonde will handle all kinds of general questions too. So, and of course, if there are problems in these that I cannot handle, uh, he will be available to handle those too. So, let me just assign a few problems to you, which you should do now. Okay, so, these are the four problems that I have written in the open system tutorial sheet. Uh, problem number 7 is uh, uh, relates to a compressor in a ship in a ship propulsion system. Uh, problem number 8 is regarding a nozzle in a steam turbine. Problem number 14 is a rigid insulated bottle which is perfectly evacuated and you let air flow in. And problem number 17 is with regard to a uh, heat exchanger. So, uh, please do these questions uh, and I think I will be ready to take questions now. Uh, Pillai Panvel, is there a question? Over to you. Question number 7, this uh, 5 percent moisture is given. So, sir, I have a doubt say where this moisture is to be considered. Over to you, sir. Okay, let me take it over. Okay, the question is regarding uh, question number 7. It says at the inlet of the compressor, the steam is at 3.4 bar and 5 percent moisture. So, when you are uh, looking on your steam tables or when you have the steam table. So, you should assume that uh, there is uh, 5 percent of uh, you know moisture which is liquid and 95 percent of steam. So, the quality would be 0 0.95, x is 0 0.95. So, that is how you must proceed with this. Thank you. Uh, NIT Trichy, is there any question from your side? Over. Uh, very good afternoon, sir. Uh, this question is related to the uh, open system. Uh, for example, let me take a heat exchanger or a compressor or a turbine or a boiler. Uh, there are basically two analysis, like uh, one is thermodynamic analysis, another one is heat transfer analysis. Does these two analysis go in parallel 
and uh, which analysis is more suitable for determining the performance of the system over to you sir uh, okay uh, i think this is slightly confused i don't know what kind of analysis you are talking of um, in the if you are talking of uh, extreme nitty gritty as to what is the heat exchanger length uh, what is the heat exchanger area Okay, we are not going to take those into consideration. So, but if you let us say you are take, talking in terms of a heat exchanger, okay, we will probably only calculate uh, heat transfer and uh, entropy production. And if you think that uh, the entropy production is too much, you may want to design a heat exchanger where the delta T's are very small, but you will soon realize that you are probably you know having too much area. Uh, you and calculation of edge, calculation of all the other things will be in a separate domain, which we are not doing. We are only calculating, you know, roughly uh, what is the kind of uh, input and output parameters we are having, and uh, whether such a process is possible. Um, roughly, how much, ir how irreversible is it? So, those are the kind of questions we will answer in our analysis. We will not get down to, you know calculating heat transfer uh, coefficients or uh, areas of heat exchanger or uh, lengths of uh, turbines. So, if those nitty gritties hopefully you know you will uh, take care of in the heat transfer course. So, we are not getting into those uh, nitty gritties here over. Thank you sir over and out. Over and out please handle your problems now. Uh, Amal Jyoti Kerala, any questions from your side? Over. Hello. So, uh, I have two questions. One is that uh, you are shown in the first slide that uh, all the open systems are considered as, uh, it is also called control volumes. So, can we consider all the control, uh, all the open systems as the control volumes? Because, I, and second question is that in case of a reciprocating compressor, the volume is constantly changing. Can we call it as a control volume approach? Uh, instead, it is very nice to see. Uh, instead, we can call it simply as an open system approach rather than to call it as a control volume approach. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Okay. Okay. So, let me uh, take the question. Yes, um, um, open system analysis typically is called uh, control volume uh, approach. Uh, so, this is exactly what we do even in fluid mechanics, okay, where we are analyzing control volume, those are nothing but open system. So, anywhere where there is a flow coming in and going out, that is what we are calling as an open uh, system analysis. Now, typically in IC engines and reciprocating compressors, a big chunk of our analysis is done when uh, the walls are closed and the mass does not cross the boundaries. In that case, it becomes a closed system analysis during the part of the analysis and it is not a control volume analysis. Uh, I hope that uh, answers your question. Over. Thank you sir, over and out. Yes, SVNIT Surat, any questions from your side? Related to steady flow energy equation applied for duct, uh, you mentioned that the equation which you uh, about duct it is uh, in terms of pressure and kinetic energy. You also mentioned that it is similar to the Bernoulli's equation, but to the best of my knowledge, when you see the duct, it is of uniform cross-sectional area. Although when there is a pressure drop, it is a frictional pressure drop, and certainly it does not uh, result in increase in kinetic energy. Please comment. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, if you look at the duct there, uh, let me see, I think it is on the previous. Okay, I think I just written this. Uh, see, if you are considering some uh, liquid, I mean of course, I did not show any change in area, but you can assume that there may be a change in area, but the other thing is that you know there may be change in uh, uh, the density. If 
if by chance it happens, then there can be a change in kinetic energy. But you are right, I mean in general if there is a change in uh, area etcetera, that has been considered, I did not write that down so specifically here. Okay. But if there is a change in kinetic energy, it could be because of many reasons. Okay. I am just saying that that is not negligible in this case, that was all that was being said. Over. Over and out. Okay, over and out. Uh, government College Salem, any questions from your side? There is a question regarding uh, 11th problems. So, this, uh, this question, the combination of uh, uh, thermal, hydraulic pumps and the boiler. Oh. Uh, here the question is asked related to the exit uh, velocity from the boiler and the state of the system also asking. So there is a, while solving a study for energy equation separately from uh, uh, hydraulic pumps as well as the boiler, uh, I hope that uh, some missing data is uh, in this problem exists. Please explain me sir, over to you sir. Okay, uh, in the problem number 11, there is first a pump and then uh, it goes uh, into a boiler. So, what you can do is first consider only the pump as an open system. Okay, the inlet state is given, the power is given. So, you can calculate the outlet uh, H of the, of the fluid as it exits the pump. Okay, and then that you can consider as the inlet state for the boiler, consider the boiler as a separate uh, open system and then the Q input into the boiler is given. So, now once this is known that you can calculate the uh, exit state of the boiler. So, you can con consider these as two continuous open systems in uh, a sequence and solve them separately and you should get your answer. Over. Sir, so for solving separately, the, for the pump as well as the boiler, we cannot pr proceed further from the pump. I hope there is some missing data, given data. Uh, okay, see, I can see very clearly that the inlet to the pump is given as 1 bar 35 degrees C. H at the inlet of the pump can be found out. Okay, M dot is given because the ray uh, 120 kg per minute is given. Okay, and the pump power is given as 110 kilowatt. So, if I just apply the first law for open systems, you will just get that W is m dot H e minus H i. H i is known, W is known, m dot is known. So, all you have to do is get H exit and that is all that is needed because that is going to be the H for the inlet of the boiler. So, I do not think there is anything else that is really necessary. Actually, you can even do this as a single control volume and it would not matter, but I think everything to find out the exit state of the pump is already given in there. So, I do not think that should be a problem at all. Over. Sir, what about the velocity sir, kinetic energy changes in the pump? As already mentioned for turbines, compressors, pumps, we will assume that the net change in kinetic energy from inlet to exit is uh, quite negligible. So, you can safely neglect the changes in kinetic energy for the pump, for the compressor, for the turbine. Over. Sir, the question in, question is, they are asking about the exit velocity of the boiler. If you know the inlet velocity of the boiler only, we can able to calculate our exit velocity of the boiler. For knowing velocity of inlet, the inlet velocity of the boiler, we should know the data from uh, pump side. Okay. Uh, see, the mass flow rate uh, of the boiler is given and uh, if m dot is given, m dot is just rho into a into velocity. Okay. So, the area is given, the mass flow rate is given rho will come from the exit state of the boiler, because you know what the exit state of the boiler is. You know the pressure and you know the enthalpy. So, you can go to the steam tables and find out the specific volume. So, once rho is known, area is known, all you have to do is calculate velocity, because m dot is known, m dot is just rho a v. So, you do not need any other data, except the mass flow rate. Over. Thank you, sir.
Uh, Panvel, any question from your side? Over. Regarding question number 7, uh, part B, sir, sir, is the process possible or impossible? In co what context, sir, we have to find out the possibility of the process? Yes, um, as I said, you know, if you just apply the first law, you can just get, you know, that uh, delta, you can correlate delta H and uh, work, but what has been given is directly you have been told uh, what the inlet and exit states are um, and you have not been told to you know yourself ensure isentropic or not isentropic. So, what you should do is just see if the second law is applicable, okay. that is uh, uh, whether you need to whether the second law is being satisfied I should say. So, you just check on the entropy of the inlet and exit states, okay. it is an adiabatic system. So, the entropy at the exit better be more than the entropy at the inlet or at at best it should be equal to the entropy at the inlet. So, that is definitely very very uh, necessary to check, okay, uh, because someone just cannot give you the inlet and exit states and say okay, I will design a turbine like this or a pump like this. You should definitely check whether the exit state entropy is uh, more than the inlet state entropy. So, the limiting case, uh, limiting exit state is of course, you know the going to be the one with uh, entropy equal to the inlet state. So, please check on this fact over. Uh, so, Maya, any questions from your side? Over. The condition of steam at inlet is uh, wet steam and at outlet it is uh, dry and saturated steam. Uh, uh, compressor can handle two phase mixture? Uh, yes, I mean to some extent yes. So, we are just assuming that in this case the inlet state is given, of course, we are not talking of you know whether the compressor can really handle such thing or not, but in most cases it can, it can handle especially in uh, sometimes in uh, refrigerator systems, it does handle a small amount of moisture over. Over to you sir, thank you. Ah, Amrita Koimbatur, any question from your side? Over. Sir, good afternoon. This is Uday from Amrita Koimbatur. Uh, my question is regarding 6.8. Uh, you, there you asked us to find out the uh, exit velocity and exit area. Uh, actually, the diameters has not been given there. So, uh, how we have to find the velocity and area in terms of uh, uh, inlet velocity? Yeah, if you uh, if you check the question, okay, the inlet conditions for the nozzle of a steam turbine are 60 bar 350 degrees Celsius, the exit conditions are 10 bar and 0.9 dry. So, what you need to do is first this is a nozzle. So, you can go ahead and get the velocity. Okay. The steam mass flow rate is given, so m dot is known. Okay, from the nozzle equation you will get the velocity okay, and since you now know the state of the system 10 bar and 0.9, you can get uh, you know the density or specific volume and m dot is just rho a v. So, rho is known, velocity is known, all you have to do is calculate area. So, m dot is given for it, over. Thank you sir. Uh, NIT Nagpur, any questions from your side? Over. Uh, sir, my question is uh, steady flow, uh, we derived so many uh, steady flow energy equations for the different uh, mechanical devices, uh, work producing, work ab absorbing, non-work producing, non-work absorbing like that. So, in that case we assume that the flow is steady, uh, means a constant mass flow rate is taken place uh, in that particular device. Suppose we have any application like sol uh, natural convection solar air heater, where the flow is taken place because of the natural convection. Uh, as the temperature of the plate, absorber plate go on increasing, the flow rate will getting enhanced. So, in that particular case, uh, will that uh, energy equation is suitable uh, or sir? Uh, see, uh, if there is no uh, steady flow, uh, that would be tough, okay, but uh, I think you are asking for natural, if you are asking for natural uh, convection, 
okay and if it comes to steady state um, then you can take a suitable control volume and try to analyze that okay and you will realize that uh, those steady state flow situations can be analyzed using this okay so as long as this flow is developing or transient it is difficult to analyze this but once it has reached steady state uh, most of these problems because you can consider i mean as long as you can calculate you can consider q dot coming in coming in or going out to the surface okay you will have to get some method of calculating m dot okay and then you can uh, go ahead and solve the problem over thank you sir uh, sir uh, uh, one more question uh, can we have any correlation for calculation of the mass flow rate uh, uh, for the natural convection uh, what do you sir okay uh, i think uh, those kind of problems we will uh, deal with in the heat transfer course because uh, that is where you will get into uh, what is the uh, you know rough velocity what is the rough m dot for natural convection and what are the heat transfer coefficients for natural convection so since we have a heat transfer course follow up and that is more relevant to that course uh, i think that is best answered there and not here over Thank you, sir. Over to you. Uh, Amruta Coimbatore, uh, any questions from your side? Over. Sir, uh, this is Uday again from uh, Coimbatore. Uh, still, I am not clear with the problem 6.8. Uh, you explained that it can be found from uh, mass flow rate given. The mass flow rate is given. Uh, mass flow rate is defined as uh, rho times area times velocity. Uh, density can be found from uh, the state of uh, uh, the property of a specific volume. Uh, area is not given and velocity is not given. There are two unknown variables. So, how can we? Okay. Uh so, as I said, see, this is a problem for a nozzle, it is not a turbine problem. Uh, so, knowing the inlet and exit state, you know the change in delta h and that delta h is entirely going to result in a change in uh, the velocity. So, one assumption you can definitely make is that the inlet velocity is negligible. So, all the delta h goes in uh, increasing the exit velocity and you will have V e squared by 2 is just uh, h e or h i minus h e and that is how you get the exit velocity and from the state as you said you can get the specific volume and since you know the mass flow rate you can get uh, the area. So, the purpose of a nozzle is just to get that exit velocity and since it is a nozzle okay, the very first thing you have to do is actually calculate the exit velocity not anything else and then uh, you can see whether the last thing of course, definitely you need to do is check whether this is possible. I mean, since it is assumed to be adiabatic, please check whether you know the entropy increases at the exit, otherwise someone just cannot directly give you the inlet and exit state and tell you to go ahead with it. Over. Sir, if that is the case, then uh, conservation of mass is not valid, because uh, rho, uh, rho A V at, at, uh, at entrance is it must be equal to rho A V at exit. So, uh, if inlet is negligible, then uh, conservation of mass is not valid. So, how can we tackle this problem? Okay, I think see this is an engineering problem. Okay, definitely, uh, definitely, uh, when you are talking of uh, the velocities, you should realize that definitely conservation of mass we are assuming to happen. And what we are doing is, uh, see this is a big nozzle, let me draw it here. Okay. Okay. And uh, for the same mass flow rate, let us say even here it is around 10 meters per second and if it goes here close to 800 meters per second, okay, then you will say why do I need to know the inlet velocity at all. Okay. Because if I square this Okay, this is having a negligible effect if I square this here okay, and you realize that there is really no need to bother about the inlet velocities. In fact, in many nozzle problems 
we just do not bother about the inlet velocities. Definitely, you know, you should not assume that, you know, the flow is being created out of nothing. Definitely, a flow is being created, okay, and um, there is a small flow at the inlet of the nozzle, but we are not really bothered about that, because most of the delta h, even if I take this 10 meters per second into consideration, it is going to only change in some decimal point at the exit velocity. So, um, neglecting it is not going to ca cause any kind of harm. So, that is a very typical analysis that we do for all nozzle problems. Okay. Unless uh, we are talking of uh, nozzle velocity between stages of turbines, sometimes at the exit of one stage of a turbine, the velocity is reasonably high. In that case, during the design, uh, we need to give the uh, inlet state to a nozzle or inlet velocity. Otherwise, uh, in most nozzle problems, it is uh, very a uh, very good assumption to just neglect the inlet velocity component because it's not going to affect the calculation, uh, you know, significantly at all. Over. K uh, K Vag Nashik, anything from your side? Over. Hello, sir. I want to know the minus V D P work. Is there any significance of minus V D P work? in open system. Okay, I think during our analysis you saw that nowhere we have come across this minus V D P term. So, I do not think you should even bother or even try telling your student that there is anything like this. It is only something confusing, we will not talk about it. Over. Thank you, sir. But in many books it is given like that. So, should we refer to that or uh, we should go by our method only? Okay, I can definitely recommend that that section should definitely not be read. So, you must throw those books out, okay, if you have them and uh, continue with this, because uh, definitely it is not the right way to teach things. Over. Okay, thank you sir, thank you very much. Over and out. Uh, JNTU Hyderabad, uh, you have raised your hand. Any questions from your side? Over. Good afternoon sir. Uh, this is regarding the second part of the seventh question. Is the process possible or uh, impossible? Why? What is the limiting exist, exit state? Over to you. Okay. Uh, so, in uh, you should realize uh, whether it is uh, you know any kind of problem, compressor, turbine, and even a heat transfer device where you know the Q dot. Okay. Um, as long see in a in a uh, turbine and nozzle problem, there is no Q dot term. So you must ensure that S E minus S I comes positive, that there is a net entropy production rate, or in the best case it is zero because that is just the reversible process. Uh, in the in a heat transfer device, you must ensure that S E minus S I and uh, minus Q dot by T is such that there is a positive entropy production rate. Okay. So, these are the things you must ensure to see if the process is possible. The limiting case is obviously, when the equation is just satisfied. So, for example, in turbines, if S c is equal to S i and that net entropy production rate is 0, that is when the that is the limiting case. Otherwise, you should always get something where S dot p is greater than 0. That is, uh, m, m dot into S c minus S i should be a positive number. So, that is definitely what you should get. So, do not just take someone's data on what is the inlet and exit conditions and believe it. I think that is what we have been trying to tell. Definitely, you can always calculate a W dot using inlet and exit states, but unless you check for the entropy, you will not know whether that thing is possible or not. Definitely, check if S dot P is going to be greater than or equal to 0 in the best case. Over. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Over and out. K K Vag, uh, there is no video from your side, but uh, if your audio is working, please go ahead with your question. Okay. Hello, sir. Uh, can you take an example of charging and discharging of a system for illustration? Only charging of a system or discharging of a system? Okay, I hope you don't mean uh, electrical charging or discharging. If it is a charging of a cylinder or discharging of a cylinder, then that is exactly what problem 14 is, which we have assigned to you just now. Okay, but uh, So, I hope this is what you mean by charging and discharging. Over. 
थैंक यू सर ओवर एंड आउट आप पी एच डी कोयम्बतूर एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम योर साइड ओवर ओके सर सर इन द प्रॉब्लम नंबर सेवन एंड प्रॉब्लम नंबर एट सो वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट वेदर दट प्रोसेस इज पॉसिबल और इम्पॉसिबल एंड यू आर दैट वाई एंड वॉट इज द लिमिटिंग एग्जिट स्टेट एंड इन द प्रॉब्लम नंबर एट सेम थिंग इज दिस प्रोसेस पॉसिबल और इम्पॉसिबल वाई वॉट इज द लिमिटिंग एग्जिट स्टेट एंड एग्जिट वेलासिटी कैन यू गाइड मी फॉर दिस प्रॉब्लम हाउ टू से दैट प्रोसेस इज पॉसिबल और इम्पॉसिबल and what is the limiting state and how to find out that okay i am uh, taking over see uh, during the class okay we had drawn an hs diagram let me draw that again okay and uh, well problem number 7 uh, is a compressor problem and problem number 8 is a nozzle problem so in one case in the compressor problem we go down in pressure p1 p2 okay and in the nozzle problem okay sorry uh, in the compressor problem inlet is at a lower pressure exit is at a higher pressure and in the nozzle problem inlet is at a higher pressure okay and exit is at a lower pressure okay and what we had said clearly in class was that since q is zero you must get m dot se minus si is entropy production rate which is greater than or equal to zero hence se should be greater than or equal to si okay and we had drawn that this was let's say for example here i to e this is the Uh, ideal case and in the reality you would go somewhere here okay similarly in this case you would go somewhere to increasing entropy now what has happened is that we have directly given you the exit state okay and we have not told you what the entropy is now since you know the state you should go and find out what the exit state is see that its entropy is either equal to the inlet entropy or it is more than the exit entropy the limiting case is always when the exit entropy is same as the inlet entropy that is the reversible case in all other cases your exit entropy must be greater than your inlet entropy okay so if the problem if the specified problem uh, let's say the compressor problem if we have given you the exit state which is lying here to the left as far as entropy is concerned then this would not have been possible this process is not possible so we would like you to please check what the entropy is at the exit you cannot blindly take uh, the given data and just do your calculations regarding uh, power input and uh, exit velocities you must also check in for the entropy condition over and uh we are getting that answer entropy production uh, in negative value and uh, so the limiting case is uh, uh, si is equal to se right yes the limiting case is si is equal to se so if you are getting a negative value right now that process is not possible so you must figure out the state where si is equal to se that is possible and all other states may be where se is greater than si you must check for those those are all possible over then what about that uh, limiting exit state sir we have to take uh, what what state we have to take what is the limiting exit state okay so for example uh, now let's say that uh, you are uh, inlet to the compressor is 3.4 bar and 5% moisture please get the uh, entropy at that at that state from the steam tables so assuming that the compressor is going to deliver at the same exit pressure of 8 bar please calculate at what condition the entropy would be the same that would be the limiting case as far as the uh, entropy as far as the compressor is concerned as far as the nozzle is concerned the inlet state is given okay so it is 60 bar 350 degree centigrade 
that is going to be a superheated state for steam, please get the entropy from the superheated tables okay. and then again go down at 10 bar. Okay. So, exit condition we will always assume that the pressure is specified. Okay. So, we will see where on the pressure line and on the isobar line okay, we will get our exactly S e is equal to S i that would be our limiting case. Okay. So, if S e is greater than S i already then there is no problem that thing is possible, but the limiting case is when on the 10 bar line you have S e is equal to S i over. Thank you sir, over and out. Uh, Somaya, any questions over to you? Sir, how to solve problem number 9? Yes, I am taking over problem number 9. Okay. So, it is given the inlet conditions of a water pump are 1 bar and 25 degrees centigrade. The exit pressure is 180 bar. The pump consumes 75 kilowatt of power and pumps 12,000 liters of water per hour and this liters per hour that is given at inlet conditions. Okay. Determine the temperature of water at the exit of the pump if we define the ideal pump as the one which does pumping isothermally, what is the efficiency of the pump? So, let us take uh, the system here, it is a pump. Okay, so, I will just draw you know one circle here okay, and uh, what is coming in is given. So, that is 1 bar and 25 degrees centigrade. Okay. and uh, the exit pressure is given, it is 180 bar. Now, you know and for a pump, okay, again we had W dot okay, into the pump or you know or you know if I just want to calculate it, it is m dot uh, h i minus uh, h e. Now, this is the simplified equation that I have. Now, h i is known because I know the inlet conditions, it is 1 bar and 25 degrees centigrade. Okay. So, if it is sub cooled as we said, if you apply the incompressible fluid uh, uh, assumption, then even if h is not given in the steam tables, you must just take it as u plus p v. Okay. Pressure is known and you must get the u and v for the saturated liquid at 25 bar, uh, sorry 25 degrees centigrade. So, that will give you h i okay. and m dot you can calculate from uh, the flow rate. So, the flow rate is 12,000 liters per second, uh, liters per hour sorry not liters per second. Okay. Since, you know the flow rate in volumetric flow as a volumetric flow rate okay, at 25 degree centigrade just get the rho. Okay, and using the rho and this flow rate, you should get the m dot. Okay, so, m dot is known, w dot is no, uh, already given to you. So, you must, you will automatically get h e. Now, if h e is known and uh, the exit pressure is known, okay, so one thing is you will have to get h e is u e plus p e v e. And in this case, Okay, you know what is H e, you know what is P e and you will probably have to calculate uh, what is uh, uh, U e and V e. Now, one method is uh, you can assume some temperature and figure out what the U and V at that uh, temperature is, plug it in here okay, because at that same temperature you will get both U and V, plug it in here and hence get the temperature. So, that is how you must go ahead and try to figure out what the temperature would be at the exit of the pump. Now, if you define the ideal pump as the one which does the pumping isothermally, okay, you will get that uh, uh, okay, if the temperature does not change, okay, the entropy does not change and uh, it is the same as taking the isentropic efficiency and hence uh, you should get the ideal pump work in that case and then go ahead and calculate the efficiency of the pump. Over. Sir, 
what is the significance of flow work in case of open systems i uh, see in all open systems uh, you will have at least one place where either mass is coming in or mass is going out and uh, or you may have both just in the most general case that we have considered we will have uh, maybe both of them normally you know in fact nearly in all devices that we are considering we will have both one inlet and one outlet unless it is a charging discharging situation. Now, in all these cases okay, wherever mass is flowing in you will realize that there is some work involved in uh, either pushing in mass into the system or pushing mass out of the system. Okay. So, if you take a closed system thing then you will realize that it involves stretching pushing the boundaries against either an external pressure or the external environment pushing uh, the boundaries into the system. So, both these constitute work P d V kind of work and hence by default in any kind of uh, uh, system uh, sorry an open system analysis the flow work is definitely going to come because of this and you cannot avoid it. Okay. That is one of the reasons the P v term always comes in uh, an open system analysis and since the P v term comes you can just combine it with a u term and nearly and you will always see that there is an h term in any open system analysis over. INIT Nagpur any questions from you over? Good afternoon sir. My question is can we imagine a quasi static frictionless adiabatic expansion of a fluid in case of a nozzle, so that it can become an isentropic expansion. Over to you sir, thank you. See in, in fact in most nozzle analysis this is what we really do whenever we are calculating uh, um, you know exit states of the nozzle. The most common analysis in fact is this is what we do, we uh, calculate an adiabatic isentropic and hence reversible expansion of the nozzle and that is really our limiting case. In, so, you you can very well imagine this as far as we are concerned that is the limiting case it is a possible case and hence you can go ahead and all real cases uh, will be you know uh, where will be where the entropy will increase at the exit over but this shall be next to impossible sir na yes in fact uh, all our uh, you know analysis with uh, uh, reversible uh, reversible adiabatic cases is as good as impossible. In fact, as has been already mentioned quite a few times in the previous lectures, okay, this is uh, just about impossible. You can never get such things even if you try your best. Okay. These are for our analysis. It is just giving us the limiting case only. You should know what the limiting case is. This is, uh, but as far as nature is concerned, this is impossible. Okay. Everything else which is possible, you must realize there is going to be an entropy production rate. Over. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Okay, over and out. See you after tea in half an hour at 4 o'clock. Over. <laughs>